Hey Dutch here. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use an offset smoker. Um, I've done several videos on how to use an offset smoker. Uh, they do really well on my channel. Um, you guys like to watch them, so I'm going to make another one today. And today I'm going to do something I've never tried before. I'm going to do a meatloaf uh, wrapped in apple applewood uh, bacon. And um, I've never done this before. I've heard a lot of people say how good uh, smoked meatloaf is, so I'm definitely going to try it. And I'm going to take you guys along with me. And on process i'm going to show you guys how to use this thing now i'll put some uh, i cards up on on uh, some of my other videos uh, i got a five under five minute video how to how to really use this so this is going to be a little bit longer video i'll go in a little bit more detail in this video but if you guys just want to watch the five minute video um, i'll put an i card um, up here somewhere you guys can check it out after you watch this one and um, i'll put in you know, note uh, notation that you guys can watch that too um, but uh, today's video i'm going to go step by step on on the different components of the of the offset and, and how to use it hope you guys enjoy this video and if you guys do um, hit that like button for me if you would if you're not subscribed to my channel i just ask you please subscribe and don't forget to click that little bell notification that way you guys get my new content coming up daily thanks for watching guys all right guys the first thing you're gonna do when using your offset smoker um, you need to get your charcoal ready and i got a little charcoal chimney right here um, what i use Newspaper works the best, but all I, all I had was one little piece of newspaper, but I put some printer paper in there and this will work just fine. So I'll show you guys putting the charcoal in there, then lighting it and getting it ready. Okay, now all you do is you slice this paper. Now I have my uncle Rico has a YouTube channel called Rico's Place, and let me scoot this up. And he was sitting there one day, just sitting here trying to light light this through here, and it wouldn't light. And I said, "Hey, Uncle Rico, why don't you just lift it up and light it from underneath, and then set it down?" He's like, "I never thought about that." Old Dutch taught him a few things. All right, so I'm just gonna light this. And I'm gonna set it inside the uh, the heat box. Okay, now while that charcoal is catching, I'm going to go inside, I'm going to get all my meatloaf prep, bring it out here and mix it up for you guys and show you what ingredients I got. But right now, I wanted to light this, that way I'm get ahead of the game. So I got everything ready to go. Uh, I'll have my heat, heat ready to go too. All right, guys. Okay, guys, we got the charcoal going. I got all my ingredients out here. I'm going to show up to you guys real fast. Um, the key ingredients to this is, it's, it's almost Thanksgiving, so I'm making a turkey-flavored stovetop meatloaf. Um, I found a recipe that calls that um, you can use uh, stuffing. So I'm going to do that and we'll see how it turns out. But I got, let's look down here. I got two pounds of ground beef that we got from the steer that we butchered. I've got two eggs beaded. Um, I got some onion and garlic, about half an onion. I got some applewood smoked bacon back there. I don't know if I'm going to put it on now or wait. Because uh, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it in this pan. Let it form to a loaf. And then uh, I'm either going to put the bacon on now or I'll put it on afterwards. But uh, regardless, I'll show you guys doing that. But I got some head country seasoning. This stuff's awesome. And also the head country uh, barbecue sauce. You would think I'm trying to sell this stuff, but I'm not. This is just our favorite uh, our barbecue sauce and season. This stuff goes great on everything. Um, but uh, I'll be I'll be putting some of that in there. I'm not really measuring it out. I'm just kind of doing it to taste, kind of what, just by eyeballing it. But I'm going to show you guys mixing it up. Okay, now I've already put a little bit of salt and pepper in there. Now I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, of this head country seasoning. Not a whole lot. Mm, that smoke. It also calls for a cup of water, so I'll have to go get a cup of water here in a minute. I'll go get that right now. All right, I got my water out here. Now I'm going to put my stovetop turkey in there. Let's get this in there. Let's put the onions and garlic in. Go ahead and put them in there. Go ahead and just mix all that in. Good. And add the water. That'll give it the moisture you're looking for. Put the little eggs in there. Right, I'll probably stick this in the uh, freezer just for about 20 or 30 minutes. That way it just gets nice and formed in there. That way I'll be able to take it out of the pan here in a little while.
All right, I'm gonna go put that in the freezer for about 30 minutes, and I'm gonna come back out here and show you guys uh, putting it on the smoker. Okay, guys, the coals are ready. So what we're gonna do now, uh, I'm gonna show you guys this firebox. Always make sure you clean the ashes out of here, because it get, makes you get good airflow up underneath there. Once you put your charcoal on, you can set us dump mine on the ground. Show you guys. I'll show you guys dumping the charcoal. Once the charcoal gets nice and gray, close this door because if you don't close this door, when you go to dump this, they'll fall out. They'll, they'll have some charcoal falling out. Okay, guys, once you put the charcoal in there, go ahead and get your wood you're going to use. I got some hickory. I'll show you my little stash over here I got. My brother's over last weekend. I got him to split all this. Dylan's over here now. What up, Dylan? I, I, I split most of this. Yeah, he didn't split nothing. On that, that back side, I split that back No, nah, I don't know about that. Did. But there's my wood pile. But here's my hickory wood pile. I got a little little stash back here up underneath the shed. So we're going to use hickory today. Like I, like I said, we're going to use hickory today. Um, all you do is stick, go ahead and stick your uh, wood on here and then let it let the temperature get up to whatever temperature you want. So I'll show you guys putting this on. All right, so you just go ahead and stick it on there. Dylan, throw me one more piece over there, bud. Well, what size do you want? Just grab one, no matter. That'll work. All right, Dylan got me another piece of hickory. Go ahead and stick it on there. I'm gonna open up, let's go over here. I'm gonna open up this, I'm gonna open up this side box right here, just so that we'll give better airflow and it'll catch your wood faster. All right, guys, I'll come back whenever it gets heated up. So once that gets lit up, I'll, I'll close it up and show you guys. Okay, guys, as you can see over here, um, right there, um, I got the flame going really good on the wood. So I'm gonna close all this up and I'm gonna show you guys closing my damper. Okay, guys, what you're gonna do first, go ahead and close your, your uh, chamber up, your cooking chamber, which is right there. The cooking chamber is where you put your meat out, obviously. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and close, close this up, close this up, and then I'm gonna show you this damper. This damper is a key uh, component of the smoker to help the airflow. So what I do, um, a lot of times I'll leave it halfway open. See, the, the more it's open, the, the more airflow gets in there and the hotter, your, uh, the hotter your smoker will get. So ideally, so ideally you, wanna, you wanna be able to, to close that damper as much as possible and get up to the temperature you want because once you, you're, once you start to fall in temperature, you can open up that damper and give it more airflow and heat your chamber back up. Bring your bring your temperature back up to your cooking temperature. So what I'll do right now, I'll put it halfway. Come see where it's at. It's probably gonna be like 375. I'm going for 250. Um, on this meatloaf, uh, people cook like 275. I'm gonna do 250, between 250 and 275. I should be able to stay right around in there, no problem. Uh, but what, like I said, what you wanna do is you want ideally to get your temperature up with that mostly closed that way you have some wiggle uh, room if you start to drop temperature you can open it up and bring your uh bring your temperature back up without adding more uh fuel to the fire so we'll show you that um I'll, i'm gonna close it up a little bit i'll show it to you guys and we'll look at the temperature okay let's close it let's close it you gotta be careful it's kind of hot we'll, we'll we'll close it three quarters of the way and we'll see what the temperature's at so you can see i closed it three quarters away Got this up. It's already up to 225 and climbing. So that's probably going to get pretty hot on us. Um, we'll give it about five minutes or so. Uh, let the smoke clear off. You want a clear blue smoke. You can see how white that is. It's probably the oxygen through there. I've never mastered the, the clear blue smoke. Like I said, I've never mastered getting the clear blue smoke. Um, but my meat's always tasted fine as far as I could tell. I've never had any complaints on it. Uh, people always like it. Um, so yes, you do want a, a clear blue smoke. That's ideal. Um, some people say the white smoke will make it bad, but if my experience, it doesn't really affect it whatsoever. There'll be people out there that disagree with me. That's fine. I'm just going off my experience. And I've been I've been smoking for probably 10 years. Um, I've only been using offset for about three years. Uh, I, I used an uh, electric smoker for like the first seven years, um, and one of those little uh like egg bullet style ones those are those are pretty cool i used those for a couple years but then i got an electric one for christmas one time used it for several years but now I'm, now i strictly do offset smoking but we'll check the temperature here in a minute we'll come back and, and we'll see if we need to adjust it okay guys it's been 10 minutes uh my temperature's right at 250 that's right where i'm shooting for i got my damper three quarters of the way uh closed so that's good because like i said before 
um, you want that closed mostly. That way you can adjust the temperature uh, or the airflow going through there to raise the temperature up because you're gonna you're gonna lose uh, temperature the longer smoke you do. This is only gonna be about a two hour cook, so uh, I'm not gonna have to add any more fire to it or nothing. And probably that sitting on there is probably gonna be good for well over an hour. But I'll show it to you guys and I'll show you guys putting the meatloaf on. Okay, I got the meatloaf out here. I'm gonna show you guys wrapping this bacon up. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on people wrapping bacon up around it, but my grandma used to do it in the oven. So I said, heck, if it worked back then, my, it should work for the smoker, right? So we'll try that and see how it turns out. Okay, I got what I'm going to do with this. I'm just going to put cook the meatloaf on this pan. Um, you could probably cook it directly over the grate, but meat, you know how sometimes meatloaf could fall apart on you. If it's going to fall apart, I want it to fall apart on that. So hopefully this comes out easy. For the most part, we'll flip it over. Actually, I'll just leave it just like that. I got my loaf look. Kind of fell apart on this. Okay, we'll see how this turns out. All right, guys, my temperatures actually came up to, let's look at it here, right at 300 degrees. So what I'm going to do now, okay, so it came up to 300 degrees. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and open up the chamber, put the meatloaf in there. And uh, I actually got, I'm going to use the meatloaf pan and put some water in there uh, for moisture. And I'll show you guys that. I usually put, uh, we'll go ahead and open this up. I usually put a water pan underneath my meat, but since I got it on a pan, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the water pan right in there, and uh, it'll still get the moisture in there. And hopefully, this bacon really keeps it nice and moist too. But uh, all right, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna place the place the meatloaf right over here next to uh, away from the firebox, which the firebox is over here. You're gonna get more heat over here because it's closest to the fire. So I'm gonna keep it away from the fire on this one and put my water pan right there. Okay, we got the water pan in there, got the meatloaf wrapped in bacon. We're going to go ahead and close this thing up. Um, I'm expecting about a two-hour cook, maybe a little bit more because it's a pretty big meatloaf, as you can see. We'll let that come up to temperature, and uh, I'll go ahead and go over this, this smokestack with you guys. A lot of people just leave it alone, and a lot of times I do too. But if it's windy out, which today's not real windy at all, it's really a nice day to be smoking. Um, if it, but if it's windy and cold out, and you're having problems with your temperature going up and down, say you got too high, and, uh, and, and you want to get it down, but you've, you've, uh, you've closed your damper all the way up, which is over here, the damper on the firebox. You got that all the way closed up, uh, and it's still like 300 degrees, and you're wanting to bring it down 15, 20 degrees pretty quick. One thing you can do is you can close this damper right here. So you can close that damper just about, just, just about like that. Still give it a little airflow. So that's a, that's a quick adjustment, and you don't want... And you don't want to do that a whole lot because you can really, you just got to figure out your smoker. Um, I've used this, I've actually used this quite a bit, but I've also not used it quite a bit. It just depends on the temperature outside and stuff. Uh, when it's cold out, it's harder to get your fire up than it is when it's warm out, obviously. Uh, when it's windy, it affects your smoker also. So if you guys are smoking in a cold, wind, uh, cold winter day and you can't get your fire up and you've got your dampers all the way open, I'll leave that open. Uh, if you got your dampers all the way open, it's probably time check check your fire make sure you got a good fire going and if you do and your temperature is right around 200 you're going to need to add more fuel source that's probably all there is to it because you've already got your dampers open that's giving it max airflow through there so it's time to add another piece of hickory it's time to add another piece of hickory oak whatever you use a pecan i like to use a pecan a lot uh, but i have hickory on hand so so that's one thing if it's cold weather you can't get it up add more fuel but make sure you got a good fire going first and uh, uh, what, a, what a lot of new people do when they're using their offset smoker uh, for the first time, they just got it uh, and they've been using it for a month or so and they just can't figure out 
what why it's so expensive to use this because they're burning so much charcoal uh, I'm gonna tell you right now the charcoal you guys see me put in here today that's all the charcoal I'll use I'll use my uh, my wood for the rest of the fuel um, I know my uncle Rico I like talking about him because he I always tried to tell him things he don't listen to me so he's got to figure it out on his own uh, he told he called me one one night and he said man I'm just going through the charcoal and I asked him how what's he doing he said well I'm doing I'm putting a little piece little piece, little wood on there but I have to keep adding charcoal to keep the keep the temperature up. I said, whoa. I said, I just add charcoal one time, and then I just keep a steady flow of wood on there because wood is, where I'm at, um, is way cheaper than buying charcoal and going through charcoal all the time. I get a lot of my wood for free from friends and family members, uh, so that, that really helps a lot on the cost. But um, smoking can be a very expensive habit. You guys know that, uh, especially if you competition smoke. Um, but as far as just home cooking with the offset smoker like this, it shouldn't be that expensive for you guys. Get a bag of charcoal. That bag of charcoal I got will last me several cooks because I'm just using one uh, chimney full uh, a time and I'm using wood the rest of the time. So keep that in mind whenever you guys use an offset smoker. Always try to uh, do your fuel source with the cheapest fuel possible, which it's wood for me. So, all right, guys. All right, I'll come back out here in about 15 minutes and show you guys what the temperature is on the settings it is now. I'll show you what I got uh, my damper is at at 250 right now. You can see that damper is all the way open, and this damper, if you can see that, is uh, about three quarters of the way shut. So I'll come back out in 15 minutes, we'll check the temperature, and uh, if we need to, if the temperature uh, started to, to go come higher, then we'll close the damper off, that way it restricts the airflow and brings the temperature down. But if it's staying the same, I won't mess with it. Alright, it's been 15 minutes. Oh yeah, we're setting perfect. About 275. That'll work. That'll work for the old meatloaf. It's been, yeah, 15, 20 minutes. You can see. Whew. Let me get that little bit of flake off there. Ain't nothing to worry about, guys. But looking good. Hey. One rule of thumb whenever you're uh, smoking, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Just remember that, guys. All right, we're about 50 minutes in on this smoke. Let's check the temperature and let's take a look at this meatloaf. We're right at. 265 or so and I haven't messed with the dampers at all still going good let's take a look at this fire inside here just to show you guys close to an hour in got plenty of wood still oh yeah looking good look at that bacon got the water pan going it's looking good we'll come back out and check in about another 30 minutes Right, guys we're an hour and a half in i'm going to go ahead and check the internal temperature i'm trying to get right at 160 or so but i'm going to go ahead and add some uh, barbecue sauce to it also so let's take a look at it like i said hour and a half in i'm still at right at 250 in the damper i've never messed with it what's looking good what is that about 115 so we got a ways to go still I like checking it in different spots. Okay, you guys seen um, the temperatures right at 250. I've been on for an hour and a half. Um, I want I want it to be done within two hours, two hours and 15, 20 minutes or so. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to raise the temperature up. I'm going to try to get it closer to 275. Um, it's right below 250 right now. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys looking in my box. If, uh, I'm going to see how the coals look. Um, if I can uh, just uh, kind of um, stoke them a little bit, that will also raise the, the temperature too. If not, I'll open up the, uh, the damper. Okay, I got a good set of coals. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the damper a little bit. And what, what it will do for me raising the temperature, um, it will get that that, uh, that bacon a little bit crispier. Let's see here. It will get that bacon a little bit crispier, and uh, it will speed up the cooking pro process just a little bit. So I'm going to open about right there. It's about, oh, halfway open, a little, a little more than halfway open. So just by opening it up uh, another halfway, another quarter, um, it'll raise that temperature up. Let's see, it's at 250. Well, actually drop because I opened up the chamber. Um, I'll come out here, I'll show you guys in about 15 minutes. We'll see, it was at 250 before I opened it up. We're trying to get 275. I want to heat it up just a little bit. 
Okay guys, I came out here. It's been right at two and a half hours. Um, I actually made a mistake. Uh, when I opened up the damper, um, the fuel source, it got real high. It got up to like 300. So then I closed it, uh, closed it some, and uh, now it's down to like 215. So I'm gonna add another, another piece of hickory. I didn't think I would need adding more to this, but it's taking a little bit longer than expected. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and check, we're gonna check the internal temperature of this meatloaf. Okay, we're at, we're right at 230. Got 30 more degrees. We're right at 130 um, on the temperature degrees. It needs to be right at 160 or so. Uh, but this has been off about two hours and 20 minutes. Um, what I'm afraid is it's going to be too dry. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it on there for about another probably 25 minutes or so. Um, I got the wood stoked. I put, actually had to put more wood on there. I didn't think I would, uh, but I had to because um, the temperature dropped on me real quick. You know, that's some stuff people don't show you uh, when it drops on you like that. Like I didn't think I'd have to put more wood on, but I do. So that's what I did. I'm putting more wood on there. Um, I'll get it back up. I'm going to get up to about 300. I'm going to try to finish this off in the next 25 minutes. I'll come back out and show you guys the finished product all right guys the meat's up to 160 i'm going to show you something i just found about 30 minutes ago i wish i would have found it um uh, before the cook so i could show it to you guys but it's a wireless uh, thermometer um i'm not even going to try to pronounce who makes it it's a remote food thermometer dual probe um, this is actually giving me readings in the house over the last 30 minutes is up to 161 um, it's the first time I've ever used it. I got it for Christmas last year, and I forgot all about it. I had it stored. I was like, hey, where's that at? Uh, I finally found it, but for the first la for the last 30 minutes, it worked awesome. Um, I will try to find a link uh, and put this down below for my Amazon account if you guys are interested in it. Um, it's a dual purpose, and I'll show you guys the rest of it over here. Let's take a look. Whew. Now, I got this temperature up to about 300 because I was trying to hurry up and finish it off. But you can see uh, the showing. 161 and I was wanting to go right at 160 and it's showing on both so that's pretty sweet I'll take this out zoom in on it for you guys Whew. all right I'm gonna turn this off I'll show you this setup real fast all right here it is like I said it came with two of these probes and two wires so I'm not real sure. Yeah, um, it has it has a longer probe too, I guess. Um, or you can do two. I think you can do two different uh, meats, dual meat. And um, there's a lot of different settings on here. I'll have to make another video just on this. But so far, so good. I've got it up to 160 degrees just like I wanted. Um, I'm going to pull it off. I'll let it set for about five minutes. I'm going to go get a knife, come out here and cut it for you. And then I'll do one quick walkthrough on the um, offset smoker for you guys. So I'm going to cut right down the middle of it. Just so I want to make sure it's nice and done. Wow, looks perfect. Look at that. Try that for you guys. All right, let's try it. It's not dried out at all. Try some of that bacon. Man, that's good. Mmm. That is good. Man, everyone who says smoked meatloaf is good, they're absolutely right. That's, that's awesome. Oh, Dylan and Megan are coming over in a little bit for dinner. I want to eat right now, but I still got about an hour and a half. I'm going to go put this, uh, I'll go wrap this up and put it up until they get here. Uh, but I'm going to do one quick walkthrough. Um, I'm, I'm using an offset smoker for you guys because this is a, how to use an offset smoker while I was doing a meatloaf. Let me just show it to you guys one more time. I think it was good. All right, one quick walkthrough. We got the cooking chamber. And we got the firebox. You guys can see I had to put, I ended up putting a lot more wood on there because I, because I wanted to get the temperature back up to like 300 degrees, 325. And uh, I left this open. Close that up. We got the, uh, the firebox, you got the cooking chamber and the smoke stack. Okay, right here. And then you got your temperature gauge, of course. So that's all there is to it, guys. Um, whenever you're using a, uh, a smoker, don't be afraid to put more wood on there. Like I made a mistake earlier and I thought I knew my smoker good enough where I could, oh, I got an extra, I got 20, 30 more minutes. I'll go check it. Well, I came back out and it had dropped on me. That's how quick some of this uh, wood could burn up pretty quick. Um, 
So always keep eye on it. Probably check it every 15 to 20, 25 minutes on most occasions. Uh, I'm using some pretty good dry wood, so it burned up a little bit quicker than I expected. So I did put some more on there. I wish I had something else to smoke because I got a whole pile of wood in there now, but oh well. Um, hope you guys like this video. It's just a, it's just a little bit longer how-to uh, video, how to use an offset smoker. Hope I explained everything well enough for you guys, for, for anyone that's new to it, that's wanting to do it. Hope, I hope I explained to you. Like I said, one of the biggest things is learn your, learn your smoker, learn how to use your dampers because your dampers are real big um, always remember um, to get your temperature to come up you got to give it more airflow inside the offset smoker to get your temperature to come down you need to restrict your airflow by closing by closing your uh, dampers I don't know if you can see that close your dampers and it'll bring your temperature down okay and like I said before one of the things I like to do I like to uh, get my temperature about 250 250 degrees and I like I like my dampers to be about three quarters of the way closed that way like it, did, it dropped on me earlier. Um, usually if I had enough uh, fuel source in there, I could have opened the dampers up. It would have raised it up, but I, I was starting to run out of fuel source. So that was a mistake on my part. Like I said, I've been doing this for, I've just been using offset for like three years now. So you're still, you're still learning, but um, you still got, you still got to go check your smoker. Um, I probably let it go a little bit too long. Uh, but hope I hope you guys like this video. If you did, um, hit that like button for me if you would. Uh, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell for notifications. I really appreciate you guys watching my uh, videos, and I uh, hope you guys like this one. The meatloaf was awesome.